I'm Charles Davis. I make my living as an economist and spend my time analysing changes in the global economy and what they mean. But this is something new and fascinating to me. Over the course of this series, I'll be travelling around the world, meeting a group of very different people and exploring a new concept, a more human, intimate kind of economy. We call it your personal economy. Put quite simply, your personal economy is how you use your finances for all the things that matter to you. Like any economy, it's complex, dynamic, always changing. But it responds not just to national or global trends, but your own individual needs. Puisque j'ai euh, j'ai eu 60 ans cette année, bon, j'adore travailler euh, bien sûr, mais à un moment il faut penser à l'avenir, surtout que j'ai des enfants qui euh, c'est un peu d'ailleurs la particularité de notre famille, ne reprendront pas la succession. And I had uh, my first child and she was born premature. It was family first or career. So it was an easy decision uh, for me to just uh, leave work. Às vezes eu resolvo alguns problemas do trabalho durante o trabalho, durante a corrida. É, essa minha hora de corrida de manhã é absolutamente sagrada. Eu preciso fazê-la. And so thinking about an economy that responds to your individual needs is where it becomes interesting, because it is shaped by far more human considerations. Things like the kind of future we want to plan for, family dynamics, the experience we want our loved ones to have as they go through life, cultural and generational influences. It's about what's important right now, but also what might become important in 10, 15, or even 20 years as your priorities change. <laughs> I've always known that you know I want to um, live by the beach. Uh, it has always been my dream, simply because I had the privilege of growing up by the sea uh, when I was when I was a child, and that's something that I believe that I want to uh, I want my children uh, to also experience. You know, nine to five is what people see, but what you've got to do is is outside of those hours. You know, I'm taking trains Sunday night, leaving at seven, arriving in Paris, you know, at midnight for a meeting at nine in the morning. Um, I have this fantasy that I would love to just take a stack of neuropsych journals and psychology journals and lay on a beach chair and read all of the journals. I would love to do that. <laughs> Started dancing late when I was 18. I moved to the East Coast to study ballet and did that for a few years, performed professionally for a few years, and then I joined the United States Marine Corps. I'm intrigued to see what drives these people and understand the differences between them. I'm also keen to explore if there are values they share that perhaps transcend cultural and national boundaries. As we travel, we'll be meeting with experts to discuss how the wider concepts of value and wealth are changing. From the advanced economic hubs of Paris and New York, we pass through Singapore, the main business gateway to Southeast Asia. Then, to the emerging markets of brash young Dubai and Brazil, not just its superstar city, Sao Paulo, but beyond to its lush tropical countryside. So join me as we embark on this journey around the world and meet some very different people who share with us what matters most to them.